Hey folks, good morning. Welcome to the Wolf Den. It's about 5 a.m. Uh, let's see. Here, I'm one of these guys that get up, gets up really early because I go to bed really early because I am a really boring guy other than when we're fishing. So, whew, I've been uh, working on getting some slab spoons together, putting new hooks, new hooks on slab spoons and stuff like that. But this is sort of just an update video, okay? And what I wanted to show you was, you know, I'm picking up some of these ugly stick intercoastal rods. Um, literally, literally from Walmart. They're the only ones that have them. The quirk handled seven foot, about uh, medium action, just good all around inshore rods. Um, unfortunately, you can't get them from Ugly Stick anymore, or actually from Shakespeare anymore. When they were being produced by Ugly Stick, or f by Shakespeare as part of the Ugly Stick lineup, uh, they were called, what were they called? They were called the Ugly Stick uh, Light, L-I-T-E. Um, I got these rods for when we're really up in the river, and my Ugly Stick Tiger light rods, the Tiger lights, are a little too heavy. Okay, you want something really more light tackleish up in the river. But what I did is I picked up, I got four of these rods, okay, for customers. And I picked up um, these Daiwa aired coastal baitcasters because even though I know, even though I do have spinners, I absolutely hate them. I hate them even on the boat. Someday I'm going to actually have to do a video of why I'm an anti-spinite. But I'll do that video, and it's going to take, I got it in my head, it's going to take a little bit of production to do that, to really describe to you why I'm an anti-spinite. But um, I picked up these aired reels. And they actually kind of match. They match this silver and got the big blue uh, super handle here. The nice thing about these aired reels is they're inexpensive. They're extremely lightweight. And uh, they have everything that I wanted. 7 to 1 gear ratio. The drag clicks. You've got the... Uh, over here, the uh, Daiwa mag system, it clicks. Um, let's see, what else? 20 pound braid, this thing holds, good God, I think it was like 300 yards maybe of 20 pound braid. I'm kind of getting sick and tired here of being up in the river and using these little fairy reels and the spinner here and getting spooled getting spooled by fish um kind of getting tired of it this holds line this is a real reel okay um this will do the job and at the same time i'm gonna have people pitching them behind the boat because i can adjust this so they're not, oh, I'm so scared I'm going to get a backlash. Um, I got them set up with some 5 8 ounce slab spoons to a 20 pound mono leader just so it's sacrificial and it'll break off. 20 pound on here. But these aired reels are inexpensive for the sheer fact that they're a graphite framed reel. So that really boils down to uh, not as heavy duty in my mind as a reel with uh, an, a 
aluminum frame and everything and complete aluminum side plates and the whole nine yards. But anti-corrosion, I mean, it won't, you're not going to get a lot of corrosion with these reels. They got the cor corrosion resistance bearings in these airs. And for $63, I got these on eBay, for $63 free shipping on eBay, you can't beat that with an ugly stick, folks. That is one really nice reel for $63 and free shipping. So I matched them up, like I said, with this uh, only found at Walmart, uh, intracoastal ugly stick. But here's where Shakespeare building the ugly sticks has made a huge, huge mistake. Let me show you something. Put this rod right here. Here's the exact same version of this rod back when Ugly Stick, or when Ugly Stick literally just made them and called them the Ugly Stick Light by Shakespeare. This is a spinning version, of course. They're identical. I mean, they still have the little foam, little foam up in here, you know, the same cap. I mean, this is a spinning version and this is a bait casting version, but they're identical. Except, even when they made the bait casting version, they had these eyes on them. These are some really, really badass eyes. They're like metal inside here, okay? And on the bait casting version, they had these same type of eyes, okay? That, that's what made this rod really durable for inshore fishing. I mean, for on a charter boat or just an all-around rod. Well, they made a huge mistake. They come out with these GX2s, and they've got these eyes on them. But this rod has the action. This is it for really light inshore fishing. But when they make them for Walmart, ceramic type eyes, they don't have those eyes. So that's where, that's where Shakespeare is really kind of making a dire mistake, I think. They need to bring these back. If I don't know if anybody, you know, what it is, a lot of these companies, we can talk to them, we can complain, and they don't do it. It's all for, it's all for this. It's the bottom dollar, okay? This rod, when it had those guides with the metal inserts, I should have picked them up a long time ago. They were bad to the bone. Okay, so that's where they made their huge, huge mistake. Shakespeare's making some mistakes in my book. You don't mess with the best. I mean, even just the old standard black ugly stick with eyes like this. No longer. The GX2. Well, someday I might have to show you what the problem with the GX2 is. I just, I just don't get it. I don't see... Why you have something that's literally world famous, and then you got to go ahead and change it. There's no reason for change, okay? But, okay, get off that high horse. So this is a perfect little setup. I'm going to be able to dial this in. People ain't going to backlash it. But at the same time, when we're fishing the slab spoons with a little patch of fish bites or gulp or something on that, free swinging hook, you don't need to cast these a country mile. So casting, you don't have to cast. Um, we're not, we don't need to do a lot of casting. So I just wanted to share that with you. The Daiwa Aired and this rod is my newest acquisition for the uh, Tackle Vault. Um, four of these, here's the reel not on a rod, 
There it is, not on a rod. Um, I don't know. I don't know all the specs on it here. I should. It's a possibility that it's aluminum side plate over here. Probably not over here. It's you know a built in Korea reel. It's not. It's not the uh, super Japan built types, but for the money. I mean, you just, really, you can't beat this thing. Uh, it's got the super, what they call the tournament drag system, up to 13 pounds, I believe, of drag pressure, which is something that, when I'm using, when I get customers using these, and we get on big, big fish, uh, just this past week or the week before, I'm kind of getting, getting confused here with Thanksgiving being right in the way. Uh, we stripped out the second one of these. This is an Okuma Trio. I kind of thought it was a cool spinner because it has this big metal bar that supposedly all the gears are attached to. But it's got a humongous weak point right in here where when you get a really huge fish on, I mean, you're fighting a 30-pound redfish on this. That's absolutely smoking drag off. Um, it strips out right inside the handle. Right inside here. I mean, you know, Akuma stuff's okay, but... These have caught... <laughs> we've had 100-pound tarpon on these. Fought them for two hours. We've caught 12-pound red snapper on these. Uh, it's stripped out on the next fish. Um, redfish up to 30 pounds, 29 pounds, 21 pounds on these. And that's a little different than if you were catching that same fish in Venice, Louisiana or something. Let me tell you folks, because we may get them in eight, 10, 12, 20 foot of water. And the minute that a big red takes off, he's just smoking it for the deep stuff. So we end up out in deep water on a, with a fish like this. So um, these are okay, but I don't know. There's just something about, well, let me, let me, I'll kind of go right into it right off the get-go here. The reason I'm an anti-spinna is because this is so obtrusive. Look up the word obtrusive in the dictionary. It means basically in the way all the time. I don't like spinning tackle for the sheer fact that the eyes are sticking out so damn far. You stick them in a rod rack, and this line is always getting caught when you've got them in a rod rack like that. Getting caught on somebody or something. The reel sticks out so far from the rod. The handles stick out. Okay? I find spinning tackle 100% obtrusive from from the word go, all right, compared to that sitting in a rod holder, okay? Let's put the two together. Hmm, I wonder what's obtrusive. So, that's one thing that I've always hated about spinning gear, obtrusive. And originally developed for people who don't really didn't know how to fish. I mean, that's the, that's the or, origin of them. You know? It's just like me. Take me golfing. I don't know how to golf. Right? I mean, so I would need, like, a really big fat club or something. You know, fat end club. You know? Uh, I need some kind of handicap. But I know today, spinning gear has really evolved. But you can't get away from the obtrusiveness, the sticking out, sticking in a rod holder. You got a set of these, and if you're always getting caught in a goddamn line and all that stuff. And when the rod bows, when the rod really bows over, and you see it on these jigging rods, how hard that line has to go around each one of these guides. I mean, the line goes. And bends, you know, really, really 
hard around those guides. There's so much pressure on those guides compared to, you know, these are closer and the bend doesn't seem to be as, as great when the line's running through each guide. So that's just me. I know I've got huge hangups when it comes to tackle. But I just wanted to pass that on. So that was the Ugly Stick Light versus the Walmart version of the Ugly Stick Intra Coastal. Spinning Reels versus Baitcaster. You know, and you buy a $60, let's say, spinning reel, and it seems like a real piece of crap. Okay. And you buy a $60 baitcaster, and I'll make, the, the, I think this thing will last 10 times longer than those. I mean, it just seems, I've got, I've never, ever completely destroyed and stripped out, well, I can't say I never have. I rarely have stripped out and destroyed even a small bait casting reel on a fish. So, it's getting to be that time when the old slab spoons, the old slab spoons, there's a little pinky white one here. This is what I put on the girls. The girls get to use this one. Um, they're getting to be used a lot. This is a bait saver, folks. Let me tell you, that's a bait saver, okay? Um, it gets down in the, in the St. John's River. It gets down quick. That's a 5 eighths ounce. You can order 5 eighths ounce slab spoons on eBay. Good deal. You can contact the people who make them, and you can get, um, you know, some quantity. All right. My open eye swivels are selling well. Seems like about every week or so, I got an order for uh, 50 for 10 bucks, free shipping. While you're on eBay, you can either pick up some Siwash, that's what that is right there, open eye, one aught hooks to match. Or the other hook that I really like because it is absolutely wicked sharp. And in, in the size comparison, it's all the same size as a one aught Matsuo. I just ordered some of these 20 minutes ago on eBay. They're a little thicker of a hook. That point, folks, is ungodly sharp. Matsuo is such an underrated hook company. Okay. They're almost so sharp that the minute you nick a rock, though, that's the, sort of the problem. That tip will bend over. So you can get like a VMC Permasteel, one aught side wash hook with an open eye. Or there's the open eye right there of just a red Matsuo one aught. And a one aught hook fits perfect with the larger. Uh, open eye swivels that I have on eBay, okay, which would be, what do they, I keep forgetting, the number five 60 pound swivel, and you put that on a slab spoon, that's a 5 eighths ounce, okay, and then what we do is we tie off the pier, this is your swinging hook, when you're vertically just pumping this in the current, it actually looks really cool in the water because what you do is you take a little patch of fish bites and I'm talking little. I buy fish bites in the strips. I cut my own pieces 90% of the time. And you take that and you put just a little patch on there and you know what it looks like? It almost looks like this is a little fish chasing another little fish. Okay. So that right there is pretty damn deadly in the river, like I, like I showed on my uh, YouTube channel, on my fishing reports blog, off of my website. 21 pound redfish 
on this right here, that pink one, and 21 foot of water at the White Shell Rocks, just off the White Shell Rocks and the St. John's River, with that little VMC hook. So we're using these a lot in this day, and the reason I say it's a bait saver is when you put the fish bites on here, or like a little, just a little gulp thingamabob, you know, any little gulp. I got some like little tiny gulp twister tails like this big that I just got, uh, really cheap, um, I like close out. Um, you hang that on here, you've got vibration, you got some, some color, some flash, and you got scent. And this is wicked on speckled trout. The yellow mouth go nuts over this. You can pick up flounder, big reds, small reds. It really works. And the reason it saves bait is because of the fact you keep your shrimp in your well. Keep your shrimp in your well for when you're float rig fishing. That's, that's how I try to practice it if I can, is when we're just catching those active fish, we're using the slab spoon. When we're going after them serious trout, boom, right onto the float rig. Right onto the float rig and using the live shrimp there. So, that's the update, the spinner stuff, but it's got great eyes. Uh, really good deal. Check it out if you're, in, if you're up for um, a decent, not an expensive. The reason I don't, didn't buy expensive reels is I buy four at a time. Uh, Daiwa aired. Coastal. These have the corrosion resistant saltwater type bearings in them, supposedly. All right. It's getting to be slab spoon in time for sure. We're getting a lot of fish off of these. And Walmart.com is the only place that I've seen where you can still pick up. The Shakespeare Ugly Stick, what used to be called the Light, but at Walmart it's called the Intracoastal, either the spinning version or the bait casting version. Seven foot, good all around rod for the river. River, you know, up in the river. Now I go to a tad heavier now as soon as I step out to the jetties and I'm usually using... Um, my ugly stick tiger lights with a little bigger reel. So that's just a little bit of an update here at five o'clock in the morning in the wolf den as I'm putting some tackle together. And uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and all that, this is one hot, hot time for fishing. We are tracking Mr. Speckled Trout. So that's what I'm doing, and that's what my focus is. And like I said, don't call me and say, all you want to do is sheepshead fish. Because we're not sheepshead fishing. We're trout fishing. And uh, if you have to get a sheepshead, either way we fish, that's gravy on top of the biscuit for you. So, thanks for watching. This has just been an update. And hopefully next time it will be some on-the-water footage. Thanks a lot for watching.